it's great to be here again. Three months, I think it's been, since I last filmed, but that's okay. You guys are still here. I'm still here. Everyone's good, I hope. This video is going to be kind of a mishmash of different stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about, well, my life for the past three months, how it's going in my new home, and kind of my future plans for this channel. I do want to expand a little bit on what I'm doing instead of just waiting months and then sitting and talking about my life. I mean, that's nice and fun and I appreciate everyone for listening, but it would be nice if this channel had a bit more substance, I guess. I'm going to show you all a little bit of where I used to live and my home now, which I think is going to be my home for quite some time. The old space I was in was an abandoned hospice. I was part of a guardianship scheme, which means very cheap rent for living in abandoned buildings, basically. It was pretty cool. I was settled for about a year. You can get more time than that. Sometimes you can get less time. But ultimately, being a guardian means that they can tell you to jog on if property developers come along and want to do something with the building. That's exactly what happened in May. Uh, luckily, I had been to a housing viewing as they'd already put a for sale sign outside the space months before. So I just thought it was wise to expand my options, really. It was actually the place I was going to visit when I last filmed my video. I think I'd just come back from a viewing um, a couple of days prior, but I didn't get in to begin with. Then when I found out I had a month to look for a place two weeks before I had to move out, I got accepted. The place that I'm in now is a housing cooperative. It's kind of like a membership scheme. They interview you and see if you'd be a good fit for the environment here. It's outside of the buying and renting situation of the world. Um, so I'm not technically renting anymore, but ultimately it's a room in an eight bedroom house for life, for as long as you want. There are people who have been here for decades. The housing cooperative I'm with was the first one set up in the UK all the way back in the 1970s. And it's a really, really beautiful space. I'm going to do a short little video and sort of input it in here and, um, yeah, I can't wait to share it with you guys. Uh, I'd love to show you my old space. <laughs> I did a very quick house tour after everyone had moved out. All the rooms were empty, a lot of it was smashed up. Not by us, but just from wear and tear. I don't know what they were doing with the building after it had been abandoned. So yeah, we just lived in this bizarre environment, but I met some nice people. It was very quiet, very chill, and it allowed me to really easily transition into working with my family. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later on because situations have developed, but for now, let me share with you the space that I used to call home. So here is my room. This weird postmodern 60s building stood out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of the street because it was all townhouses. Um, oh, here's my little bike. Going upstairs, um, I think there were about 10 rooms in the whole building. Uh, there's a smashed up light, not sure how that happened. This was the long corridor. Um, we are about to enter my absolute favourite bathroom just because it was random as hell. I liked living in a building that had this because it was hilarious. What the hell happened here? I have no idea. It was like this when we moved in. They said they'd fix it and they never did. Much like this bedroom, which was unoccupied, I kept my stuff in here right at the end before we were about to move out because it was just a big empty room so it was really useful. This was the kitchen. I used it with my housemate, Ed, um, and we left a lot of stuff here because it, it was just here when we when we got here. Uh, as you can see, it was pretty ransacked by the end of it. This was my very useful little cupboard. I used to keep all my sales stuff in there. This, number eight, is my old bedroom. It was really big and um, the light was quite nice. I sort of got the light in the evening um, because I was on the back end of the building sort of thing. Gorgeous, gorgeous trees and um, 
I allow myself to be helped, I allow myself to transform. That's what I wrote on my mirror to keep me motivated. This was the corridor leading downstairs. Super, super hot shower room. It was really fun to sing and dance in there. This is the lovely courtyard with the beautiful church. The view was, was really quite nice. I was very lucky to live here. This was the room I was always jealous of because the light was amazing and it was way bigger than my room. This was the creepy little place we ended up opening up with a knife. Um, <laughs> I really, really hoped that I'd find a, uh, a door leading to the roof because it was all flat and I knew that you could walk across it. Um, but when we found the door, which I knew was the door leading to the roof because there was sunlight coming from the outside, as you can see, um, it was locked, which which was very sad. Coming downstairs now, um, we had the view of the neighbours' garden, leaks upstairs and downstairs, as you can see from the puddle, we had to deal with a lot. Fly dashing at my face, my partner dashing at my face, being a very good egg and stealing wood from the kitchen. This door was open the whole time I was here, very upset that they'd locked it. Um, I used to take big planks of MDF wood um, and do cute little projects with them. There's some lovely little flowers I decided to film just because they were pretty. This was the big courtyard. It was really nice to kind of invite friends and family over and just sit in the sun. And yeah, I was just really, really lucky to have this space. The garden was absolutely magical, especially when it was more overgrown. I used to come here after work in the winter and sit outside with candles and just look at the church and the stars and it was amazing. Adorable greenhouse that we used to grow some tomatoes, but like the rest of the house, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty messed up. Um, yeah, the actual building isn't that pretty as you can see, but the layout was really, really cool. That was a cute chair I'd found in the streets that I was very hopeful that I might end up fixing, but it never happened, so unfortunately I just left it there. This was the downstairs living area. Uh, didn't spend a lot of time downstairs, to be honest. This was the big, big kitchen, so the rest of the people used it. Another puddle on the floor, lovely. There were so many leaks in the house, man. Luckily, I didn't have to deal with that in my room. This was the rest of the rooms downstairs. Uh, I didn't really know the people that lived down here, but we exchanged pleasantries. And here we are at the beginning, the front of the house again. So as you can see, the building had so much light and an amazing garden. It made it difficult to want to leave because the rent was good, the rooms were massive, and the location was absolutely amazing. It took me about half an hour to get to my partner's house, and now it takes a bit longer than that. But I use my bike a lot more now. Are you ready to see the beautiful space that I have been lucky enough to be accepted into? So just as I was about to come outside of the co-op to film, this cutie decided to come and say hello. His name is Werecat, and I think he was one of the first cats on the block. Um, there are about nine cats, I think, here, and uh, I live with one of them called Pepsi. She's super cute and super fluffy, but her owner is moving to another house on the street, so she's going to have to go with her. Um, but we are adopting a new cat at some point, and I'm sure I'll put her in my stories, because I've never met her, but I'm excited because I hear that she is very friendly. This is one of the little gardens that's just at the entrance of the co-op. There's a car park, and behind me there are these sheds we use for woodworking and painting and decorating. This is the big mural, it's absolutely amazing. Entrance to the houses, and this is the side entrance that people go when they <laughs> don't want to talk to anyone. At the end of the entrance there is a big, big shed and we use it for bikes. Um, that's a side entrance to into the co-op and to the street. This is one of my favourite parts of the co-op coming up this little area because it's where people have little parties, gatherings, and there's a stream, this sort of uh, really green area with benches and, and pools of water and it's just amazing to come here and relax and enjoy nature. Um, 
it can be really quiet and really beautiful. There's this little shed area that people go to chill. It's got fairy lights and all sorts. Um, yeah, I haven't spent too much time here because I've only been here for about two months, but I'm excited to experience more summers and more fun in the communal areas. There's more houses up that way. I think there are about 14 houses in total. Uh, but I live back down here, so let's go. Really amazing plants and trees all over the place. Um, oh, cute, cute little spider coming to say hi. Um, keep walking down and all the houses are pretty much the same. All the rooms are pretty much the same, but people decorate them in all different amazing ways. Um, yeah, just gorgeous trees. Oh, you can see a train go past. We are right next to the overground. Pot plants, vegetable patches, and we've come to my house. Here it is. There's googly eyes on the door because why the hell not? Inside there's a boiler that says Aurora, which is <laughs> what I wanted my um, stage name for my music to be until I discovered that there's already musician called Aurora, which was very disappointing, so I'll have to think of something else. We just went through the kitchen and now this is the living room with all the music equipment. This is the really cool toilet. Um, my housemate did it, I think during lockdown when everyone had the time to do random stuff and uh, yeah, just magazine clippings, completely decorating everything. Coming back through the kitchen and upstairs, there's a big wall hanging of Ganesh, the Hindu god um, of new beginnings, prosperity, the remover of obstacles, and I was amazed as I'd been doing work with him, like affirmations and everything, and it was just, I felt like I was in the right place. The upstairs bathroom is the same, completely decked out. This is just a cool ass door, it's like my favourite door in the house. Upstairs is great big pieces of art, really high ceilings where we hang our washing, um, random car door. I think we want to redo a lot of this stuff, uh, but I mean the space is just amazing, really light, really big. Um, this is my top floor. Little bath, so we've got a bath and a shower which is awesome, and this is my bedroom. Um, I want to do a full room tour for you guys at some point but little sneak peek. Oh, that's me editing this exact video. That's Darwin being a weird upside down monster. And that is it. So here I am in my little room, coming to the interviews and seeing the size of the rooms initially had me a little bit worried because I had a lot of stuff. Um, I still have a lot of stuff and I can see how it would feel very cramped in a space like this with many many objects. My partner often has qualms about it because they're slightly more of a minimalist than I am. I feel like I want to be a minimalist but I just enjoy aesthetic craziness a bit too much. I'm still on my own journey kind of finding the balance. I've come to the realization now that I don't need all these things but I still enjoy it and trying to discipline myself into not buying more especially when I have the opportunity to go to spaces like charity shops where you find the weirdest things and it's all really cheap is definitely something I still find challenging but to be honest the size greatly reduced my desire to fill the space with lots of objects. I'm really happy here, I'm really comfortable here. There is a main road about 30 yards outside of the pathway of houses. Um, I'm sure if you listen you'll be able to hear cars sort of go past which again was a worry because I wanted to use this space to record music but I found if I close my windows I can still sort of do that and I think as I start creating more professionally I'll be able to look into external workspaces. Uh, there are loads around London and I think having a space outside of your home where you can work if you're freelance is massively helpful especially if you have a tendency to get distracted or procrastinate. I feel like organising my time and prioritising what 
I really want to be doing is also something I'm working on. It is a constant journey. Also learning to not punish myself or blame myself for falling behind or not getting everything I want to do in one day done is something that's proved really valuable to me. I think we all have a bit of a tendency to be our own worst critic. I've spent a lot of my life prioritizing others, helping others and then getting frustrated at myself because I haven't been putting energy into my own stuff um, and my sort of development at the same time without even recognizing that's what I'm frustrated at. So it's been a long time coming um, but I feel really blessed to have this space. I was accepted into the third house on the street and it is a house full of musicians. Every single person here does music in some sort of capacity and I mean if that's not the universe being like jump into your freaking music fam I don't know what is I'm really excited to begin collaborating or even sharing knowledge with the people that I'm living with they're all really down to earth they're all really wonderful people in their own ways and I've only been here for a couple of months but I'm really excited to see what opportunities are born from living here I'm going to be having a lot more time on my hands um, in the next month and a half as I've actually handed in my notice of work. Uh, it was a difficult thing. I think it had been on my mind for so long that the energy and the idea of leaving had just built up so much within me. Leaving was a very emotional thing to do, especially as it's my family. But I've seen this entire year working there as just multiple life lessons, ultimately. Um, I've got a lot of things to be thankful for. It's brought me closer to my family. It's really taught me the importance of boundaries, putting my foot down and prioritizing what's best for me. It hasn't always been easy. It can be a very high pressure job when you're looking after someone who's in the last stages of such a serious illness, especially if you're around people that don't always know how to process their own stress. I found myself increasingly, when it wasn't such a good day, really questioning why I was putting myself in that situation. You know, just negative, reactive behavior, um, and yeah, being around that energy was, was tough. What made it difficult was there was such a duality of like deep love and care and stress and guilt and like all this other stuff that wasn't really talked about that much. Also being in a space where, you know, people who are close to you don't really share your view of life and the benefits you can get from doing deep internal work on yourself. I didn't feel like it was my place to preach that sort of stuff or educate my own family. I mean, it's always tough when your family share different beliefs and sometimes the best thing that you can do for yourself is remove yourself from the situation. I haven't fallen out with my family. Our relationship is good. I just think that it will flourish and be better when I'm not working there anymore. I ultimately want to create my own life, work for myself, generate my own money. And um, yeah, it was just time to move on. This feels like a really big step for me. I've never lived by myself where I haven't been working for someone else. I think that the transition will bring about new opportunities, new creative endeavors. Ultimately, I'm just really excited and um, yeah, I can't wait to share it with you really. My mum and I have been talking about me getting a life coach because I often struggle to begin things, I often struggle with choosing the right path when there are so many opportunities. I know that my reluctancy with wanting to find a life coach does stem from a trauma response of 
wanting to do everything myself, wanting to achieve without anyone's help. That's something that I've learned over the years. Yeah, just asking for help is okay, basically. Who knew? I tried therapy a lot when I was in school. I had such a bad time in school, um, as did probably about 95% of children indoctrinated into the school system and brainwashed into thinking everything they're learning is true and normal. My partner suggested last year that I could really benefit from these meetings. It's ultimately a safe space for communicating with people who've also come to the realization that the only thing that gets in the way of you achieving what you want and communicating how you want is living in a reactive state and you know not being aware that a scale of trauma essentially runs our life like everything we learn as kids shape how we respond to the world as an adult talking about that being aware of that and ultimately thanking a force greater than ourselves for protecting us, guiding us, is sort of the foundation of these meetings. I went for about a month or two, um, found it really amazing, uh, really grounding, and since moving I just haven't gone. It's like every week I allow something to get in the way, um, I mean, summer is a really busy time, but I feel like everything I say to be like, oh, I haven't gone to my meeting this week, just feels like an excuse in my head. And I'm really feeling the state in my life of having not been to these meetings. I think it's mixed with a little bit of shame and guilt for having not carved out that time for myself, knowing how beneficial it was. They gave me a little bit of clarity each week, um, an opportunity to just be with myself, be with people going through the same thing emotionally. I just really want to get back into them. Ultimately this is a positive message. I just wanted to share those little bits of my life and how I've been feeling recently with you all. I really appreciate everyone for watching as usual. Um, the snails had more babies and if anyone wants a giant African land snail and lives in London or in the UK and would be happy to travel to come and pick them up, DM me on Instagram <laughs> we can sort something out. You don't have to have 23 of them, you can have one, but if you're interested then I have babies that I need to get rid of. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it from me today. I will want to do a kind of full room tour to properly show you guys my space. One more quick update, uh, my Depop is back and very much active. I'm selling things, all of my pastel goodies from toys to whole outfit coordinations. Everything I post on my Depop, I will also post on my sales Instagram. You can find the links in the description below to both my Depop and my sales Instagram. However, selling on Instagram means I can let things go for cheaper. I do tack on a 10% increase to the price on Depop because of fees. Um, and I almost got completely banned from Depop for promoting my Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that, however, I'm letting you know here if you want my stuff and if you want it a little bit cheaper, head over to my sales Instagram. I can't wait to see how this channel may flourish into bigger and better things with the time I'm going to have after September. It's going to be my birthday at the end of September, I'm excited, I'm probably going to be working through it and then have a nice holiday with my partner. It's their birthday at the end of September as well so it would be nice to do something fun and celebrate everything. Life, goodness, happiness love. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for taking the time to watch me ramble about my life. It's always fun, everyone is always welcome, and many, many blessings to all of you. Thank you. Have a beautiful week and a beautiful life. See you in the next one.